Hi, I'm Jane Dunnewald, and today I'd like to share a way of using a heat press in your botanical printing process that will speed it up and ensure really beautiful direct prints. I've been experimenting with this for five or six months, and I'm so jazzed, I just wanted to shoot this little video so that you can get the tips that will help you accomplish success yourself. There are three qualities that contribute to a really good botanical print and I'm characterizing a really good botanical print as one that's clean, crisp, and where all of the plant foliage, whether it be flowers or leaves, has actually transferred and I don't have any partial prints anywhere. The pieces you see behind me are examples of prints that I consider successful prints. The first quality that we need is to introduce heat, and we do that when we boil or we steam. The second quality that we want is moisture, because Nothing will print or transfer if the surface is too dry. The third quality that we want is as much pressure, really even pressure, as we can possibly accomplish by either bundling everything together and tying it up with string or by using aluminum plates and clips, which is what I use in one of the classes that I teach. The press solves all these issues in the adapted way that I've learned to use it. And so that's what I'm going to show you. First of all, from the moisture standpoint, because a heat press has no moisture, not in the original setup, not in the, the device itself. So I have to figure out a way to introduce that moisture, and the way I'm going to introduce it is with wet felt. So what I have here are several pieces of felt that I soaked in water, just water, prior to getting ready to film. Now, I always work on a piece of Teflon, and these Teflon sheets and a lot of the materials that I'm using, I'll reference at the end of this video with some links so you'll know where to get them. Felt you can just get at any craft store. So I've cut it to fit the Teflon, and the press I have is 16 by 20. So these Teflon sheets are 16 by 20. I could cut the felt 16 by 20, but my paper's not quite that large. So in this case, I'm using felt that's a little bit smaller than the Teflon sheet. <clears throat> I do have two layers, as I said, and both are wet. Not sopping wet, but wet enough that they won't dry out while they're compacted by the press. Now, I'm using watercolor paper, and I have mordanted the watercolor paper for 20 minutes. Actually, this paper was mordanted a little bit longer because it was left from yesterday. But the mordant helps create the deepest, clearest print that, that's possible and also is attached to the longevity of the print and the stableness or the stability of it. So I've got my watercolor paper. I'm going to take that out of the mordant and put it down on the felt. Then I have a little dry washcloth and I'm just going to blot this watercolor paper. This paper has a couple of stains on it, but I can deal with that with the foliage I'm introducing. Now, in this plate, I have two pieces of felt, same inexpensive craft felt, and I have poured a solution of ferrous sulfate and water onto the felt, and I'm going to use that as a dip for the leaves. Now, the leaves and foliage, and general term, flowers, are really an important part of this because some plants don't really transfer at all. Some are poisonous and to be avoided. And if you're new to this, it would be a really good idea to look up plants and botanical printing and find another video or another website. There's sub several really good ones online that will give you a list of plants that you should avoid. If in doubt, just avoid it, okay? I'm using a castor bean. And castor bean has a bad reputation because it can be toxic in certain circumstances, but using leaves like this is not a problem. So I'm dipping the leaf. The reason I don't just have a dish full of the ferrous sulfate solution is because it's harder to get the leaf coated with the solution without having it dripping wet, which contributes to bleeding and then affects the distinctness of the print. I'm going to put the castor leaf down. And then I also have some ash leaves that came down in, in the, the wind last night. I'm going to put those in here. So most of the time, I'm trying to use whatever's local and whatever I can grow in my yard. So I'll put those in. One of the beauties of working 16 by 20 is that I can start to work from a compositional standpoint, which is why I got interested in figuring out the press in the first place. This is a Vitex. I'm going to add those into the mix. I'm lucky to live in South Texas, so even though we're filming this in December, I still have foliage 
on the trees. Now I've also been experimenting since this is the Christmas holiday season with poinsettia. And poinsettias actually grow where I live outdoors, but this happens to be a plant I bought and I'm gonna lay a few of these leaves in as well. And I know you're probably wondering what's gonna happen with the red leaf and it can be very unpredictable. Of course, that's considered the flower, but I'm gonna lay one of those in here too, just so we can see what happens. Now, once I have my composition finished, and there are lots of other things I've learned to add to this particular way of composing that add additional color and pattern and texture, but that's a different video. In this one, I just wanted you to see the basic process. I'm gonna lay this felt on top of the foliage. I'm gonna put another piece of wet felt on top of that. So, two pieces of wet felt on the bottom, the paper, the foliage, two more pieces of wet felt, another piece of the Teflon. And by the way, I did research the Teflon because there was some question about the safeness of Teflon. And this press is never any hotter than 310 degrees. Teflon is stable up to 500 degrees. So you could use silicone instead if you wanted to, but it really helps to have the Teflon partly as an insulator and partly to protect the press and the platens in the press. So now I'm gonna carry this little stack that I've made over and put it in the press and show you the next step. Okay, this is what the heat press looks like. I have two models here because I'm experimenting right now and I don't know whether there's a best press for what we're doing or not and I like to know that as the kind of researcher that I am. Um, I do know that it's important to protect the platen and so both of these presses have uh, Teflon been refitted so that they have covers because of the moisture that's being added into the press. Doesn't seem like that would be good for a platen. So this sort of a barrier is a really good idea if you decide to go this route. And you wanna keep these surfaces really clean too. So I have an easy off oven cleaner, or sorry, iron cleaner that is specifically made for the press and there'll be a link for that at the end too. Now, because I've got all that moisture in the, the felt, I have a couple of towels around the press because a lot of water is gonna run out during the actual pressing time. And so, depending on where you're working, you have to take that into consideration, otherwise you'll be standing in a big pool of water and that can't be a good thing. I'm gonna take my, the bundle that you saw me, or the stack that you saw me make over there, put it inside the press, the press has a timer, it looks to me as though they all do. They all have a temperature setting and a timer and you can set those and then it defaults back to it every single time. There is a recovery time on the heat, so if you're doing a lot of prints in all in, you know, in one fell swoop, then you will have to wait for the temperature to come back up each time if you want any consistency at all. But that hasn't seemed to be any real big deal for me. Okay, so. I also have a place on these presses where you can adjust the, t the, uh, the actual pressure, which is this knob back here. And most of the time I have it adjusted so that I can push it down pretty easily. If I really, really have to work it because I've got a kind of a, a thick stack or heavy paper, then I can adjust it and make it a little bit um, less pressure, a little bit looser. But I wanna be careful not to do that too much because otherwise I'm really not taking advantage of the pressure that I'm gonna get. And in case you're not familiar with the heat press, the heat source is actually on the top here, which is why I'm not gonna build a big stack of things and try and do five or six prints at once because the bottom layer wouldn't be getting the same amount of heat that the top is getting, okay? So I close the platen, and when I do, that automatically gets the timer going, and I'm gonna wait four minutes, and I'm gonna pop it open and show you what it looks like. Okay, that's a sign it's done. So this is great because when I walk across the room, that's a reminder, so I can't ever burn anything down. Now, this is really hot. So what I've learned to do is to pick up one corner of the Teflon here and one corner of the Teflon back here 
and then walk this over to the table. So that's what I'm gonna do next, and then we'll have the big reveal. Okay, this is like opening the best present. I never get tired of it, it's always really exciting. So let's see what we've got. And by the way, I never let this sit around for any length of time. Um, when we do this the traditional way, sometimes people leave their bundles and they don't open them for 24 hours because they think the prints are better. But I haven't seen any reason to do that. And frankly, I wanna open it and get the moisture away from it so it doesn't bleed, because I love the crisp edges. So I'm gonna take off the Teflon and then I'm gonna take off this felt and all the felt will go back in the, the pan of water that I have. I always have to re-soak the felt each time I build a bundle or do a print. Now the leaves, see they come right off. The felt actually starts drying out. Oh boy. You can't use the leaves again most of the time. Here's a really good tip. This is called a potter's tool and I'm not quite sure beyond that. There are lots of potter's tools but it's like a little needle and it makes it easier to pull up the plants because they get so flattened out. Okay, now let's pay attention as I'm pulling these leaves off to the color that's underneath. So that's the Vitex, and of course this was the poinsettia. These are the ash. Oh, see they might be at the end of the season. There's really not much print coming from that, and last week they were really much more intense, but that's okay. Now up here, let's see, oh those are already gone. Look at that detail. Here's the, see isn't that interesting? That didn't go red, which hardly ever happens. You don't really get the color that's in the leaf. And Nice, that's the castor bean. One of the reasons this press is so great is, see that beautiful detail that I've gotten where the veins were? It's hard to get that sort of, I don't know any other way to get that sort of pressure. So that's a really, really nice feature of the press being so uniform when it flattens everything out. Then this felt will go back in the water again. I clean these sheets with vinegar and water, spray them, and wipe them, and then I'll lay this print off to the side to dry somewhere before I begin the embellishment process that I always use on these once they're finished and I'm through with the, the part of it that, that is wet. So there you go, four minutes, ferrous sulfate solution, little alum acetate, really nice watercolor paper. A little bit of Teflon, a little bit of felt, magic, total magic. I hope you'll have a chance to try this too. Maybe you already own a press. If you're watching this video on YouTube and you go down to the description, you will find links to all the products I recommend. Um, that would include the copper and ferrous sulfate that I use. I don't use any rust. I'm not into oxidation. I don't think it's good over time. But I've got papers that I really love and I've got um, Eventually, I'll probably have a press recommendation. I can tell you where to find the iron cleaner. I can tell you where to find the Teflon sheets. All of that stuff will help you get started. And I do that not necessarily because I get any kickback from anybody, but because why not just cut the chase and buy products that you know are gonna work. So that's why that's there, and I hope you'll take advantage of it. I hope you'll like the video. I hope you will ask questions or make comments, and I hope you'll subscribe because I'm intending to produce a few more of these. I really enjoy YouTube and I enjoy sharing my discoveries and I'm working on stuff all the time that's cool that I'd like to share with you. So check that out. Next year there will be a class on botanical printing online. We're filming it now. That might be something you'd consider signing up for then. In any event, it's been great working with you and I hope you enjoy playing with this.